Okay, in this video we're going to look at simplifying absolute value expressions and uh, these are the three types of examples we'll do. Uh, example 1 we'll do these these two and these type and examples 2 we'll do the, these types here and example 3 we'll do uh, these types here. Okay, so we'll start with example 1 alright, or the examples, the first examples. So, please write this down and Remember I always talk about being neat when you write math. This is the absolute value sign. It is not a 1. It is longer than a 1. So don't be afraid to make that a lot longer than the 1. See? Just to make sure, you know, that you're not just um, making it look like another 1. And Because it helps me to read your homework. And it also helps you not to make a mistake, more importantly. So you're not just doing 10 minus 3. So it's not so much that. You, you want to make this absolute value line a good bit longer just so you're very clear that that's the absolute value uh, symbol. You know, So don't be afraid to make these things real long here just to make sure you're identifying that that's higher than the number. It's definitely the, the absolute va value symbol or um, op op operate, you know, the, the absolute value um, operation here. So all we got to do is do what's inside of the absolute value and we've got 10 minus 3 and that makes 7 so this thing is absolute value of 7 and what does that give you? How far is 7 from 0? The absolute value of, a posit of anything is, is always positive right? so absolute value of a positive number is positive, absolute value of a negative number is, is positive so go ahead and do this and what's the absolute value of 4 minus 1? That's equal to the absolute value of 4 minus 1 is 3. And what does, that, what does that give you? Keep going all the way. Absolute value of 3 is just 3, right? Now, just for fun, I've thrown these guys in just so we can get a little bit of a preview as to what it means to subtract a larger number. So I just want to imagine if you had $3 in your bank account. You have $3 in your bank account, okay? And you spent $10. Okay, just for fun, you have three dollars in the bank. You spend ten dollars. What's in your bank account now, and can you express that as a negative number? Just for fun, you have three dollars in the account. You spend ten. Your account has a negative balance of negative seven. Does that make sense? Negative balance of seven. And what's the absolute value of that then? Because we still have to deal with the absolute value sign, right? Absolute value of negative 7 is positive 7. So it's the same answer as up here. Look at that. Absolute value of 10 minus 3 gives you the same thing as absolute value of 3 minus 10. Right? In other words, the distance between 10 and 3 is 7 on a number line. So if you have a number line, this absolute value is kind of like saying um, the distance from 10 to 3 is 7, and the distance from 3 to 10 is also 7, right? So that's what that's what it, it means. Anyway, um, do this one, absolute value of 1 minus 4. This time you have $1 in your bank account. You spend $4. How much money is in the bank account now? You have $1 in there, you spend $4. Are you in debt, right? So you're in debt, so it's a negative, right? How far are you in debt? Or are you below on your account? Three dollars, right? And so that's that's the subtraction. Now we'll do the absolute value. What's the absolute value of negative three? Positive three, right? So just like again, absolute value of four minus one became the same thing as the absolute value of. 1 minus 4, right? Okay, on to the examples, the second examples. These guys. So if we have two of these, what do we do? Right, just do it step by step. So we're following the rules of PEMDAS, parentheses, exponents, multiply, divide, add, subtract, right? From left to right. So absolute value signs are just like parentheses. They're a type of parentheses. They're a grouping symbol, okay? 
So we do whatever whatever's inside here and whatever's inside here first, and then we continue on, right? So figure out what this is, and then figure out what this is and just write it down. 12 minus 3. 12 minus 3 is 9, right? 14 minus 6. What's 14 minus 6? 8. Then fill in everything else. We haven't done the absolute value yet. We haven't subtracted yet. So you just fill that in like that. Okay. Now we calculate the absolute value of 9 and then the absolute value of 8. What's the absolute value of 9? Just positive 9. What's the absolute value of 8? Positive 8. And now we subtract. And the answer is 1. Right? So, can you do this one? Just It's the same thing as on top, just reversed, just for fun, because I just want to have a little bit of fun with subtracting a larger number. If you have three dollars in your bank account and you spend twelve dollars, what's in your bank account now as a negative number? Or if the temperature is three degrees Fahrenheit and it drops by twelve, what's the temperature now? If the temperature drops by twelve, what's the temperature go down to? Negative nine degrees Fahrenheit, right? So we could write in negative 9. Right? And then we have to get the absolute value still. And we'll figure out the, the inside of this guy as well. So if 6 minus 14, what's that? So again, you could think if the temperature was 6 degrees Fahrenheit and it dropped by 14 degrees what would the new temperature be? Right? Or if you have six dollars in your bank account and you spend fourteen dollars, what's in your bank account? So if it's the temperature six degrees drops by fourteen, the temperature becomes negative eight. Negative eight degrees Fahrenheit, right? Anyway, um, just for fun. So what's the absolute value of negative nine? positive 9. What's the absolute value of negative 8? Positive 8, right? And then we subtract. 9 minus 8, 1. Do we get the same answer as before? Yep. So when these are switched around, 12 and 3, notice that you get the same answer. 9. Okay? 14 and 6 switch around. Okay? Okay, example, third examples. A few steps to do on these. So I'll do the first one, then I hope you'll try this one. So I'm going to do this one. Again, I've got to follow the order of operations. I've got to follow PEMDAS, right? Parentheses, exponents, multiply, divide, add, subtract. And I've got parentheses or grouping symbols here. So I've, I've got to do everything inside the absolute value first. And when I look inside here, I see another set of parentheses. And look at it here. So it means I've got to do the very inside parentheses first. So what does 5 minus 3 give? And just write a parentheses here and plug in whatever 5 minus 3 is. Write it down. 5 minus 3 is 2. So you just take one step and then you fill the whole thing in all over again. It takes time to write it out, but it's the, the way you're going to do it without making a mistake. Because if you make one mistake in math, then the whole thing's wrong. And you have to start all over again. Or repeat that class all over again. So let's just take one step at a time, make sure each step is correct, and then you'll get the right answer, and then you'll be in the next math class before you know it. So, we're still... We, we, we're still um, got to work inside this absolute value because it's just like a parenthesis. It's just like a parenthesis. The 
Okay. Now inside the parentheses we have two operations. What are the two operations? There's multiplication here, isn't it? Four times two. And there's also subtraction. Are you tempted to subtract first? You might be because it's on the left, but that would make the whole thing wrong. Because if you follow the order of operations, you've got to multiply before you subtract, right? So we've got to multiply before we subtract. So we do parentheses and then we keep going, right? So inside the parentheses we don't have any exponents. Uh, we have a multiplication, no divisions, uh, no additions, but we have a subtract. So we got inside these parentheses we got to multiply and then subtract. So go ahead and multiply four times two. What do you get? Eight, right? and then write in everything. So this became 8 and then write in everything else. So we got a 15 minus absolute value 8 minus and then this became 8, right? So what do you do from here? So we've got to keep working inside this absolute value. What's 8 minus 8? 0 so write that down, fill everything out again. So we go step by step, just like this. See, 15 minus absolute value of 0 is 15 minus, what's the absolute value of 0? How far is 0 from 0 on a number line? 0, right? 15 minus 0 is 15, right? So that's the answer. So press pause and try to work this one out yourself, step by step. So 23 minus the absolute value of 10 minus 2 times 7 minus 4. Okay, I hope you pressed pause and tried it. I'm going to do it now. And the first step, you should have tried 7 minus 4. What does 7 minus 4 give you? Because we're working, we got to do parentheses first, right? Got to do parentheses first. And we're working inside of these large absolute value signs okay so 7 minus and inside there we have a parenthesis which is this this inside inner one here so we got to do that first 7 minus 4 is 3 and then you just fill out the rest of the problems write everything all out all over again this is the way you don't make a mistake okay because if you make one mistake the whole thing's wrong so now we've got to work inside the absolute value sign still because it's kind of like a type of parenthesis. Inside there, what are the two operations? We've got subtraction, 10 minus 2 is 8, but hold on a second, we also have multiplication. Which should we do first, multiply or subtract? Tell me. Do you multiply first or do you subtract first? By the order of operations, you got to multiply and then you subtract, right? 2 times 3 is what? 2 times 3? six. Now fill out everything else. Just write the whole thing out all over again and keep going. What do you do now? What's 10 minus 6? You gotta calculate this, right? That's 4. So we get that and keep going until you're done. Just step by step by step. Absolute value of 4 is 4, 23 minus 4, 23 minus 4 is 19, right?